Alright, we got a set. Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. It's Wednesday, September 13th. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no no uh, no speakers today, so it should be a quick meeting. I'm sure there's a lot to talk about. Did you have something to say, Mr. Frank? No? Right. Okay. You're like one of those students in class. I'll make you do lines. <laughs> so do we have any old business we want to talk about, Maureen? Well, I think we need to talk about, with the help of Mr. French, I think we need to talk about Children's Week, Hampton pre-auditions, the Hampton Talent Competition, and the Reminiscence on Labor Day. I give you Mr. French. I have to, I have to go to the podium. Huh? Yes. yes, you do. Unless you want lines. <laughs> John, if anyone wants to speak, please give me the mic. All right. And you would be Glenn French, entertainment um, coordinator, producer of the co-producer of the Hampton Beach Talent Competition, uh, with the eminent uh, commissioner Maureen Buckley, um, completing the 2017 uh, music program. Overall, it went well. Uh, I've had very favorable comments on most of the bands and um, some some unhappy that the Continentals didn't play as much as they usually do uh, and that was a little bit by design um, and a little bit uh, by necessity the fact is that I've only got so many dates I can't fit anybody everybody in that I want Great comments on Shirley Alston Reeves. Uh, she was with the Shirelles. Um, it was an expensive act um, to produce. Whether we should continue something like that is another question. I think, I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's important to do those kinds of acts because people will talk about it as part of the program. Whether that helps the overall um, health of the beach, I don't know. I know that the music program, I feel comfortable with the music program being strong. Uh, and again, there were, there were some new performers uh, this year. Sold Out Show Band was one. Um, Tony Mack is a returning act, but got great comments. I had uh, um, some terrific comments about the Darren Bissett country music band. I heard that too. Um, so, I mean, those um, those performers, I think, did an excellent job. We tried to strengthen the music on Monday night, um, and I think it worked to some degree. I mean, people who are going to sit on the beach with their families and watch the movies, that's, that's terrific. Um, but we find that where we've got a limited audience, they're either going to go one place or the other. I don't know. Uh, at any rate, uh, we had some pretty strong bands on Monday nights, and it it made a difference out there. Whether it helps across the street, I don't know. I noticed that we're starting in May, the first Saturday in May with a, with a, uh, uh, with a band. Probably will be the reminiscence this year, but that has yet to be determined. Um, they have a website and they promote, they have a good following. Uh, that's the reason why. And they have, we have a fair audience. Uh, then it drops down a little bit, then it bounces back. Um, uh, the night of the junior prom. Now, I've given you a calendar and a suggested date for the junior prom. That's unconfirmed. I don't know that to be a fact, uh, but I'm assuming that it is. And and no matter what date it is, that's the date it is, and that's the date. I assume that you want to continue supporting that event. I think it's important to do uh, for the town of Hampton. So overall, I think we had a good music program. Um, 
The talent competition had some changes this year from past years. We, we had a live audition uh, two years ago uh, on Memorial Day weekend. And while successful, uh, from a management standpoint, it proved difficult. That is to say, we had people we liked a lot in the talent competition and the live auditions on Memorial Day weekend, and some that we thought, well, there are maybe uh, to fill in, and then there was a month and a half, two months and a half, before we could actually notify them. The, the time did not work in our favor, did not work in their favor either. Uh, we moved it to um, August, the first Sunday in August during the day. Um, we published the time as, I think, 12 to 5 or 1 to 4. It was 12 to 5. <laughs> We got confused. I was there from 12 to 5. Yeah. Um, and most of the auditions were between 1 and 3, 3.30. And we picked up some terrific talent. Really, uh, some, some very good performers from that. Uh, the following afternoon, Monday afternoon, uh, the selection committee sat down and reviewed all of the CDs and videos that were sent in. Uh, and from that, we were able to make our selections. Um, we, um, from then, went forward. I thought we had a, a terrific three nights. Um, I asked, I asked um, Catherine Leonard to jump in and help um, with the emceeing this year with Angela West. I think that went very well. Um, she had great study, loaded with personality and bubbly as ever. And uh, even Angela um, uh, complimented her uh, and to me that she thought she did a great job. So um, I've suggested some dates to you for this year. I don't think they're firm yet. We've talked a little bit, but we haven't decided. I'm looking at Commissioner Buckley here because we've chatted with those, what those dates, I think they are. They would follow the same pattern. When do we do the live auditions if we're going to do them again? I think we are. I don't know what day, uh, but I've suggested that they are the first Sunday in August being consistent. Uh, with our with our plan, and then when do we review the applications again? The deadline again is the last Friday in July. Doesn't mean anything. It's artificial. Um, we will accept an a good performer up to the last minute almost. I mean, I I don't think we would take them the day before, but um, we've been willing to accept. What we want is a good show, and we want the performers. Uh, to enjoy it as well. We, we're doing it for the audience, of course. We hope that we will get families down to, to visit. I think it worked. Uh, I, I have to thank uh, the Harris Sea Ranch Motel again. They gave us 11 room nights this year on a busy weekend. She was sold out uh, and never complained a bit about, uh, about providing the rooms for me. And she's done it every year for quite a while now. So, um, and a, and a, on a weekend that you wouldn't normally sell out, so maybe you sell out because you get donated the rooms, okay, but uh, this is a case where she could have sold them and made some serious money and it didn't happen for her this year. So, I again, I have to recognize that. But according to the chamber, there were no rooms available on that weekend, yeah. which... I, if, if I think the weather plays a huge role. No question. But I think the talent competition played a role as well. It at least contributed to that. Um, so, having said that, uh, I have uh, provided uh, the commissioners with a list of suggested dates. Um, these are unofficial and not approved uh, until you actually review them. And you may circle these and go, no, 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 I don't want this or that. That's fine. That's nothing personal with me. Uh, I'm trying to get moving on this uh, because I don't think we can um, wait until March to actually start scheduling. I'm actually talking to bands now and telling them nothing nothing is official until the 1st of April. Are the sand sculpture dates correct for next I got year? those from Greg Gray. That's what I meant. You uh, did? Yeah, yeah, those we are, have to discuss it. I think you're going to have to go up yeah, that's again. That's okay. be, that's between you and yeah. and Greg and whatever you decide. That's fine. I I, I uh, that's what he gave me and that's what I wrote down. Okay. Uh, and incidentally, 
his date to drop the sand is the date I start the full entertainment program. So if he goes a week later, I probably would go a week later. And okay. only because there's no, no, yeah. Uh, and, and that's just. I think there might be a conflict because it's the same weekend as Father's Day. So. That makes a difference? Uh, might. What was the same? The, the um, actual competition is Father's Day. Oh, oh, I see. Father's Day is on the Sunday, right? It's Father's Day and Bike Week. Well, again, that that's a that's a date. That's a determination that you will have to make uh, beyond my pay grade, as it were. But, right. but it's on Saturday, right? The yeah, yeah. But the, it's Father's Day weekend. It's Bike Weekend. It's a little earlier that it could be. It's later if he does the 19th. Well, at any rate, I've, I've given you a list of suggested dates. Um, we're talking about the week after the 4th. Um, that would be... Actually, we're talking the 9th to the 13th of July. Yes. Yeah, not the whole week, so... Um, uh, July 9th is a Monday, uh, 13th is a Friday. Um, what we do that week is somewhat up in the air. I don't know what we can do. Uh, I'm proposing a variety of activities. Uh, so for I've told you understand. privately, I'm very interested in booking the Boston Pops. I thought Pops on the Beach the would week. be a wonderful event. All week long. Yeah. Uh, one night. <laughs> Is two one hundred seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollars. Thank you very much. Well, what are we going to charge for tickets? I <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Huh? At any rate, I think that's the kind of hit that I think we need if you're going to make that event happen. It's not the kind of money that I mean we we have to give up entertainment for two years to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. At any rate. So for people that don't understand, uh, we're looking at the second week of July. We, we, we have a steady climb of business for the beach. Fourth of July hits, and then we dive just after the fourth. So that week after the fourth, because there's such a big, uh, big buildup at the beach all of a sudden nobody's here and then it slowly climbs back up again to a, a strong level so we're, we're looking at where are these people going how can we make sure if they're going if they're going elsewhere how can we bring them to Hampton so the climb stays up and goes right through July and August so we had talked to Glenn about trying to come up with something talked to John about trying to come up with something so I would like to maybe in uh, the first week in October Maybe we can have some type of work session yeah. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and anybody out in the audience or anybody in the village district that has a business or people that have some ideas um, that we can do some type of promotion, or maybe they know someone that would want to partner with us with a promotion, they're welcome to come to that meeting. So we will post the meeting. Um, maybe we could do it before our next meeting in October. I know it's tough because it's Columbus Day and stuff. But what do you guys? What, is, what does everybody else think? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna say nothing. <laughs> the only thing is, if you do a work session, <laughs> do you have to post this? Yeah, we can post it. That's yeah. I mean, I'm, that's a, oh. yeah. I mean, you're not going to do any business at this. No, it's just to discuss things. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to post it because if someone has some ideas. Absolutely. I would love to hear them. Yeah, you know, or absolutely. Or someone wants to send us information or email or, or drop a note or drop by and see one of us or see John or see you. That would be great. Um, With the lead time to do this, the sooner the better. Right. You guys, is anybody going anywhere? Maybe the 3rd of October in the afternoon? What day is that? Church? The Tuesday? Perfect. Uh -huh. Does that sound good? You bring in the food? What day is that? Tuesday the third. Tuesday the third. Tuesday the third. You can you can wake up and, once in a while. You gotta pick the food up. You better give yourself a little bit of a And that meeting will be where? Right here in this room. Okay. That's a B one Bread? Yeah. I um I think that's a good idea. 
and we sit and we talk about all of the things we could do. We don't necessarily have to do five days of events to kick this off. We could do two, one or two or three, and focus on the things that, that we think we can do and accomplish and that people will remember as a fun week on Hampton Beach. And incidentally, this phenomenon is not new. It is old, old, old. Um, but this past year, the weather not cooperating as, as we would like to have had it, I think, presented some unusual problems. Well, so just to discuss how it, how it works, if, if there is something going on and people book their cottage for that week or they book a hotel for that week and they're here because of something, then, then, then they will support the local businesses and they'll, be, and they'll enjoy this. If we're looking for people to come down during the day, it's all weather permitted. So we really want to find something that's going to get people to come here. And, and stay overnight. Yeah. You, if, and, you know, I, and I'm fine because I have a very good location, but there's a lot of cottages that are empty and there's a lot of uh, hotels on the back boulevard that are pretty empty that week. And uh, we, need to, we need to help everybody down here. So. And, and, I, and you're right. If the weather is poor, um, if it's pouring rain, everybody loses. Because uh, the, the, the motels will check out early, too. They won't stay. Well, no, they'll stay if they're paid for their room. They're yeah. not going to leave. So. Uh, but at any rate, um, if we Don't can... Go shopping. If we can... Um, yeah, it, it's, but it's not on Hampton Beach. Well... I mean, they'll go to the arcades. They're definitely I'm okay with a one-day rain or something. Yeah. But I mean, if we have them here, yeah. then we yeah. have an audience that we can we, we, What What has started to happen, Fourth of July used to be the big week on Hampton Beach. That was it. And it gradually, gradually has shifted to later in the season. Uh, this past year, I didn't see the bump until probably the end of the first week of August. And it was nice. It was good. We, had, we were people here. Uh, and that's not to say others weren't here earlier, but we're slipping. And I think we need to be more assertive in that area. Uh, and that's, I've got all these things I wrote down, and I hope it, we, who was it? It was Tommy McGuirk that suggested pr the professional volleyball competition. Remember when he said that? I don't even know where we were, but we were talking, and, he, and the, you made the comment, would they support the businesses? And he said they do someplace. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Is we're, we're, we're going from where we are now, which is like probably nine tournaments um, during the summer to I got a $100,000 set up. So right now... Is, is that something that would work on Hampton Beach? And I don't know if we could have cash or something like that. I've looked at it in Florida. Um, and you have to bring in stands. I'm not sure what we're going to get around here. Um, you need a sound system. You need. We own one. Yeah. Uh, professional management of the event. I'm sure that there are companies that do that. Oh, no, no. On this level, people that you're going to try to acquire, no. They want to know these guys have got to have their gate people right up there, not a little girl sitting in the same going. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that there are professionals who do this for a living. I'm, I don't know that... Well, let's find out how much it is. We, we started I, I don't off with know. sand sculpture. We didn't spend any money, and now look what we're spending. So maybe there's... Uh, and, and is it worth it? I think it is. Maybe it is. I, I, or maybe I don't there's know the something answer. else. And, and that's what this work session will be, where someone can come up with some ideas. The, the only other comment I, I'll make yeah, is... All right, good. But you wanted to come up with that? Did you want to come up with the hundred thousand dollars to sponsor that? I was just, you know. Um, well, maybe there's a maybe there's a beach nearby that'll split it with us. Well, three days here and three days in, in Old Orchard or something. But, I mean, I I don't know. Each other yeah, maybe the, the Northeast Volleyball Competition. I don't yeah, know. That's an interesting so. idea. Um, at any rate, I I'll finish up. We we talked privately uh, about. Uh, the country music program, uh, that's very popular. It has obviously caught on because the country music, is, is they, they follow each other around. Uh, wherever, wherever the bands are playing, each band has its following. 
Um, the one, I had two comments that came from a couple of gals that either, I think they some are here, but they may, they may be year-round residents on M Street, I'm not sure, uh, asked for line dancing instruction. And it's not the first time it's come up. So I've already tentatively um, struck a relationship with a young woman who teaches line dancing. Uh, she does it at the various clubs. She has a following. I talked to her. She said, I would love to come and be with my people. My people implying that she knows them all and they know her and I could be fun. Now, does it happen? Does it start at 6 o'clock at night? That was one suggestion by Angela West. While the band is setting up and doing their sound check, we would do the line dancing then and then she would continue on. Or maybe we do it uh, maybe like at 630 and it morphs into 730 or 8. She gets paid by the hour, obviously, uh, but it's probably worth the investment. Uh, I'm willing to, I think I can work that into what I'm doing, but maybe not. I don't know why. I, I got to scramble all the numbers. Uh, at any rate, uh, <clears throat> and the other comment I made, I reached out, I'm going to reach out again to WOKQ, which is a country music station, uh, ask them to uh, help sponsor the country music. They get their banner on the stage. They get a, they'll get a mention in the in the guidebook and the uh, uh, in the calendar of events. I've already talked to Bobby Hula about this. He, he listed anyway, so he said adding OKQ is not a big deal. Uh, try to get in exchange for their sponsorship. They give us airtime. We may have to spend some money with them but we get a little bit more because they're the sponsor. Maybe they'll even have somebody come down and uh, introduce the bands. So whatever it is, um, we'll see where that goes. And I, I was kind of hoping that I would have a little bit of a proposal from them, but I haven't offered to pay them any money, so maybe that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't want to pay you anything, but I want a lot. Uh, but I'm not unlike anybody else, I suppose. So at any rate. Do you have any questions of me? Thank you very much. I just want to thank you for have, doing such a great job this year. Um, every year it gets better, which is difficult to do, so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'd like to make a suggestion about the advertising for all these events, John, if I may. Would it be possible for all of the posters of all of the events starting in June to be up in the chamber and all around? As opposed to when it gets to be about a month, throw it up there. I think, I think, I, especially I'm thinking Absolutely. the talent. However, you gotta, you're going to have to induce some force into the chamber to say, put these on. Not a problem. Okay. What, I, what I'm concerned about is that, that we have more time to advertise, especially the Hampton Talent Competition mm -hmm. and that pre audition day. We've done well, but I really think we would even do better had we, if we were advertised ahead of time. Sure. I'll start tomorrow. Okay. Well, don't put it up now. It's going to snow and everything. <laughs> well, but I mean, soon. he can only put the stuff up is when he gets all the, the, the acts and the things and the dates. Officially, yeah. Officially, we don't know the dates yet. Anymore. No, but he knows what I mean. As opposed to putting it up in July for August, put it up in May or June for the whole kit and caboodle. I totally agree. Oh, good. Come Thank up. you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That chamber advertises from Key West to being or May, and they put in things that weren't related to the beach. So sometimes there was just no place on the wall to put these things. Well, you give it a moment, she'll put it on the wall. No, it's where I, It'll be on the I get frustrated with it because I go in there and I saw instead of um, they took the poster out and I pulled it out, but it was was the Hampton Beach Chamber and Susie Q's travel agency selling tickets to go to Italy. And I just don't believe that should belong, well, you know, on, on inside of something that we're promoting. Well, the bottom line is this. Not, do, not only do I want it in the chamber, I want it everywhere. I want it in the hotels. I want all of the things in the hotel. I want to look at sandcastles and idle and pre-auditions and all of those things all at the same time, all over the place at the Pelham and all over the place everywhere else, where, where including the chamber, John. Where was he going to put five or six posters in the film? 
I don't know. That's his problem. <laughs> We need to create a, a catalog right? in your rooms. You'll put it somewhere. You'll have room. I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> put it with the coloring function. The calendar of what? No, but don't you think it would be better to have all of the stuff? Well, really? Yeah, I'm just laughing at these guys. <laughs> I think it, I think it's important. And we'll put the calendar of events in your rooms. That, Maureen, that's kind we'll of like that the, now, sure. that's what he does at the, in the kiosk. That, that calendar for the whole summer, right? Is that similar? I, I can hear you. Whether or not they're going to put them on more is, is, is that, that's that, my problem. That, does the music make a difference? Now, let me explain. In what, what sense? The difference is what we do creates an atmosphere of, of entertainment. The fireworks, the music, everything that's done. People are coming in. The movie nights, the, and and the experience of Hampton Beach is what they're talking about. And I have people that, so I can only tell from people that are staying over in the hotel, so I don't, they come back excited, did, oh, the help, uh, Beatles revival, and blah, 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 amazing. And, and, and then I get, then I'll get, oh, you like that? Ah, yesterday was much better, you know, and then I'll be, so you can't please everybody, but they all love the experience of everything. They love the fireworks, they love the free movies, they, even the people that don't go to something, don't go to the movies, talk about the movies. So, I mean, it's just, we give everybody a lot for free, which nobody does. Right. It's amazing. It really is. So the whole experience of Hampton Beach and the fact, the only people that, up, that, that upset me about Hampton Beach are locals that talk about how awful we are. And we're so wonderful, I think. It just drives me crazy. And I'll say, when was the last time you were down there? Oh, I don't go down there. Okay. What do you mean you don't? I, I can't park anywhere. Well, yeah. other people can. <laughs> you know, I just... It really frustrates me. That that's where I get frustrated. And then I'll have people that'll come down and sit on my front porch and say, "Wow, this is really neat. This is great. You do this every night." You know, it's, it's just funny. They it's they don't even know it. They don't even know what it's about, and they and they live two minutes away. So, I, I had one comment. Oh, I've been getting some feedback. People, particularly older people who are not computer literate, are wondering if you can put a list of the events on Channel Twenty Two weekly, so those people would be aware of what those is... Those people even come down here, Bob, once during the summertime, and I'm not against that. Just once during the summertime, they can pick up a calendar of that at the chamber. Yeah. You know, just one. And I've, 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 I've heard that many, many times. We go, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's yeah. here, it's here. I don't... Well, basically, I think they're at it. It's easy yeah. to turn on the television and go somewhere to get this information. The, 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 the weekly events also show up in the beach cover and it's a cup scene. I, I've dealt with these people. Yeah. And I just don't know. Unless I personally know them, I'll, I'll hand it to them. And here it is. No. is or it go it? up to the nursing homes. But the possibility of those people getting out and coming down, it's like Chuck says, <laughs> they just don't. So what are you saying? You're willing to try it? Or oh, I'll try it. Produce it. Yeah, it's easy to do. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a lot of people watch 22. And you have, um, it's free. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything. No, it's not. To, and who knows? Maybe somebody 100 or 107 will see it. <laughs> Grandchildren. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> will, will that person be at our fire show? Does, do they know about it? Well, because they do now. They're watching this show right now, and Bob's going to talk about it next. Still on 22 for, for at least 10 days. Yeah. I had a phone call from a lady asking me all about the fire show and exactly what is it. Exactly. So I went over everything, explained it all to her. She said, it's a really nice event. So I'm going to be there. So, I mean, and, and she, so she saw it on 22. So. Is 22 going to tape it? We'll, leave, we'll let Bob tell you. Bob, you're on. You're on Fire show. The short answer to your question is I don't know whether Channel 22 is listening in the next room, though. You better check the contract. If you really want, want to understand what this show is about, take a moment and go to our July meeting. There was a presentation by the group that is going to put on this show by a videotape, an oral presentation of what it's about. It's basically a group called the Boston Circus Guild. 
these are high-end professional performers who perform in the higher-end districts, particularly along the Hudson River Valley, where the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts hung around in the summer. Their normal charge for this show per ticket is $20 or more. Our shows obviously are always free. The show itself will be presented approximately dusk around 8.15 to the right of the show, somewhere in the general vicinity of the playground. What, what is the show about? The show is a group of highly competent dancers and gymnasts who will perform dance and gymnastics while engaged in holding torches and different sorts of paraphernalia which will be set on fire. If you've ever been to the Caribbean, this is the sort of show this would be reflected as. We would strongly invite everyone to come and experience it. It's just something a little different. We're trying it out to see if it could work going forward. Um, that's, that's about it. When? Saturday night. And we're in partnership with... Uh, oh, yeah. That's an excellent point. 8.15. Do we, we have posters for that as well? Yeah. yeah. They're all over the beach. Yeah. There's a giant one on the playground. Is there, oh good, is there one in McGuirk's and the Sea Catch and um, they don't Boardwalk? Put, they don't put those things up. Right? There's one at the Pelham. <coughs> good. So if you well, buy the, the Sea Catch, we can put one there. Yeah. And then, um, um, so we're in partnership with this. Isn't it right across this. from Tommy McGuirk's? This thing. Okay, that's a valid point. It's across from the Pelham. Chuck is no, bringing it's up. Not. Is it across from the Pelham? Oh, not nice. The playground. Good. Street. We're, we are co-sponsoring G and H. Between G and H. Between G and H Street. Okay. With the Chamber of Commerce and the Town Recreation Department, it's an attempt to try to, at the end of the season, invite the local community and people otherwise coming from other areas to come together when the beach is a little less dramatic and to enjoy it and to have a specific reason for coming Saturday night, which now that all the schools are open is probably the prime weekend night for people to attend these sorts of events. The location, the location if, if I can have it, but again we have to deal with the guild and there are, there are a little what more space they need. spaces. Yes. I was planning on um, having outside just like the movies so that if we have some older people who don't like to walk on the sand, they can come down the ramp way and, and go out 70 feet and watch it from there. So whether or not they're going to let me go from 60 feet from that area over, I can uh, measure it out because it does go out at an angle. And then you, you can have people hopefully be able to stand up on the boardwalk and look down. So try to make it a little, you know, people are going to stand in the sand for 20 minutes watching the show. Not everyone can, you know, want to get it down very easily. So can they bring a chair? Sure. Bring a chair. Bring a chair. So my, my interpretation from the thing I told the woman, she says, well, what does it mean? And I said, well, go online and look up. Oh, I don't do computers. Um, I said it's a combination of Cirque du Soleil, a luau, and a fire show all thrown in together. So I yeah. thought that was kind of what I, what my interpretation of it. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it has the potential for really being a fun event because it's not been done, it's not been tried, and it's unique, unique to here. Uh, and these people are high-end performers. This is the not auditioning here to get work. They are have the work. <laughs> We've got 20,000, almost 20,000 kids on our page for the Young Fire Show. Mm -hmm. So nice. we know it's out there, at least our followers on Facebook. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to you, John. Your promotion of this event has been way over what anybody could have reasonably expected you to do. Uh, you. <laughs> I am very impressed. And I've always been impressed, but this is particularly impressive. Because we're asking you to do something in addition to all those other things you already do. And you took it on with love and passion and confidence and mm, it's, I, I, I've got to understand how fine the reach of your tentacles is 
in the promotional community. Your questions to have you. Thank you. All right, any other new business? Um, I talked to Mike O'Neill. We talked about the parking lots for a while, and we don't have the final numbers. I do have some of the numbers. Um, the, the clues lot, which we call the clues lot, uh, was up in the season. And this is before Seafood Festival, everything else, it's up. The, <laughs> the fire station lot, way down. <laughs> uh, we just had a bad spring, bad June, and not the best July. August pulled out some good weeks, but we just never, never could catch it up. So being up over there was good, but that's a much smaller lot. And I, I want to say we're down about 15,000, something like that. Does that about sound right? Or well, maybe it's more. It's a, it was a lot more, but I think seafood year. kind of might have pulled us forward something. This and now we. The first year that, that since I've been treasurer, which has been a number of years, it hasn't been more. Every year it's been more. It always more, goes more. up a little. This, this was. This year it's yeah, it's off. It's just plain off. Okay. I'm hoping if it's 15, if it's only 15, that'd be very nice. Yeah. So. Are we going to be open this weekend? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The town lot's down as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, every. It's just the, the weather. Price, it's all the weather. Cost to park your car on this beach is no joke. And you know what? I talked to someone the other day, and I, we were talking about parking, and we we kind of keep our parking lot at a, a, a fair rate. I think we only go up high on Fourth of July. And a gentleman I was talking to, he says, well. You have a beautiful beach. You have a lot to offer. He said, but to pay $30 to park when I can go to the same beach in Salisbury and pay 10 maybe I'll give up some things and go to Salisbury. And I was you like, know oh, what, Chuck, if I could just mention one thing, because I've, I'm the one that processes all those parking slips. And you know what? Many, many weekdays, it's 5 bucks. No, no, I'm talking about us personally. That's, We're fine. That's what I'm talking We're about. We're not raising the rate high. Up. Clues in the fire station, it's five dollars for the day. That's very reasonable. You come to this beach and you drive by the first parking lots and they're thirty, forty. Those 50 are private dollars. lots. They are? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Right. But it's not it's the total picture. So somebody's driving down the street, they've got three kids in the car, they gotta pay fifty dollars to park the car, they got nothing left in their pocket to buy a pizza or a cold drink, uh, or anything. That's so I mean so that's why we're yeah. We're trying to push, trying to get more parking. I mean, we've been yeah, trying that. Because if there's it's supply and demand, if there's more parking, the prices are going to go down. So. Well, the more private parking lot you put up, the more the problem is going to Well, I mean, so and it's it's private and they're paying a lot of taxes. So you understand that they have a business to run. So you got to understand that. But the lots are, are, are sitting there. So one lot right next door. Waits till the town and the precinct are full. As soon as they're full, he puts mm -hmm. the open sign and he shoots the price up. That's that's supply. business. He's a good businessman. And supply and demand. I got to give him that. But if we had bigger lots or more lots, um, then he's not going to wait till we're full. He might be cheaper than us, so he'll fill. You know, so that that's you have to look at that. I mean, and he'll be five dollars when we're ten, and then we're full and he goes to twenty on the same day. I sit and watch it. You know, and that's he's a good businessman. I mean, that's what he does. So, it's tough. I'm the last person to tell anybody who owns a private lot what they should charge. Right. That's their business. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it has an impact on everything else on the beach. I agree, 100 percent. I see it. All right, so that's it on whole you know, business. Can I say one thing about this parking thing? Because even on a weekend, okay, if you come here early, you can park in the state lot. It's two dollars an hour. If you stay for five hours, you're talking ten bucks. I do. You know, and, and as well, if you come early. But if you come at the two o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to have to pay whatever the market is. I get it. No, but, but I just want to leave it on a positive note that it is not. It's very affordable. It you can know, be. If you yeah. Come early. It's very affordable. Fifty bucks is a lot of stuff. Stop saying that. <laughs> Ten bucks. So, I don't know. So it's something we have to work on. I've had meetings about it, and I don't seem to get very far with it. I really would like to do some remote parking and some type of shuttle service. And I think that's a great idea.
if uh, we hadn't lost the shuttle from back when, uh, we, we, you know, we had a running business that we could have kept going, we could have supplemented it where it doesn't have to make money, but just not lose money, which would have been fine. So um, it's unfortunate. So that's all I have to say. And uh, I want to go to approval of minutes. Approval of minutes from August 9, 2017. Do I have a motion to accept them as presented? I so move. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Yay. Okay, now public comment. What? Sure. Public comment. John? Thank you, Commissioners, for uh, having me um, do the marketing this year. I'd like a shout out to my movie crew, Bill McNeil and Rokas Rocky. I can't pronounce his last name. Anyways, they were great. He's uh, uh, Rokas is from uh, Lithuania. Tall kid, great. I got him from um, from uh, Chuck. Uh, he worked for Chuck. Strong as an ox, and that's exactly what I need. That's green. <laughs> It screens 400 pounds, you know, so I've got a kid from Lithuania, big, and I've got a person who's a stonemason, and you know, it works out perfect, and, and they were always there, and they helped out, and we grew and grew, so I really appreciate all the help that they gave us. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, and it's... A quick note on, on Rocky, because he's like a, he's, he's an energizer bunny, big kid, everything else. I think he enjoyed the Disney movies more than the seven-year-olds, oh, to tell you the truth. Really? He would be all excited about that. <laughs> he wants to That's bring funny. this back to his country. He gets really excited about it. Yeah. He's all pumped up for it. So <laughs> we're a lot of fun. Um, another shout-out is to uh, this coming weekend, the 16th, will be around the same time as our show's going on, but maybe if you want to get in there before. It will be the final day for Mama Leone's restaurants after about 48 years. They will be closing. This Saturday? This Saturday, the 16th. There is a sign on the Hillcrest that says, Restaurant for Relief. So it's not a, you know, this is what I heard, or, you know, it's a third, third person, so it's there. So, um, you know, they've been here a long time. Uh, great people, family business of three generations that uh, have been in that uh, restaurant. Um, I've been there many times and shared a lot of meals over there with my wife and uh, my family. Uh, so I'd like to thank them for what they've done to Hampton Beach. And if you want to stop in to say hello to Linda and Gus, um, this will be the weekend to do it. That's all. They're going to be missed. Any other public comments? Yeah. Good evening. Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. Uh, as many of you know, the USS Hampton, the nuclear submarine, is at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. It has been up there since the uh, middle of the summer uh, for a retrofit, and chances are it's going to be there up until June. And the, the community of Hampton and some of the businesses of Hampton have really stepped up and uh, provided a lot of uh, venues and services to the members of the crew. Uh, the 401 Tavern had them uh, for their Oktoberfest the other day. Uh, they were able to uh, get uh, free admission to the Seafood Festival for members of the crew if they decided to come down. And the experience Hampton has been working with them and providing them uh, uh, coordination with some of the events in town, playing, having softball games, and so on. Uh, in fact, they, some members of the crew are going to be marching in the uh, Christmas parade. So uh, I'm on the USS Hampton Committee, which we kind of coordinate some of these events. And one thing that came up, I know it's a little late in the season, but when these guys have some free time, they do like to come down to the beach. And one of the problems that they have is the expense of the parking. And Chuck, I've talked to you about this already, and I just want to get a little input from the other commissioners. I say, I say it's kind of the end of the, the end of the season, but if it's agreeable to the commissioners, I would like to uh, get in touch with the. the uh, he's the master chief. They call him the, the cob, the, the chief of the boat, who coordinates the <coughs> recreation activities for the members of the crew. 
and at least impart to him that as a contribution from the Hampton Beach Village District to this crew, that they would be allowed to come down if they desire and park for free of charge in our parking lot. Uh, and what I would do is provide them or have them display a sticker or something on their dashboard, and all the 200 of them are not going to come down at the same time. You may have one or three or two or three cars come down on a weekend or even during the week. But if I could, you know, see, see that they have this placard on their, uh, on their dashboard and that the uh, attendants at the parking lot would know that they would not be charged for the parking. Uh, may I have your input on this? Or? I mean, during the week, obviously, we're not open. Wouldn't be, wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. Maybe, maybe give them eight placards that they could pass around. Whoever wants to. Use well, that's it. You wouldn't have fifty placards. The, the the chief would pass out whoever, maybe four or five placards. I mean, provide them with four or five, and they may have only one or two that would come down. So you're agreeable to allow free parking during the week with a display of. I wouldn't even mind the weekend this time of year being well, pretty right. much quiet as long as it's not 50 cars. I mean, well, no, I don't, mean, I don't anticipate What that. about the clues lot? Either one, I mean. Either one. Either one. It doesn't matter. This time of year, no, it's going to be full. Right, so. you're to oh, let's put it this way. Fix the rate of those. Right. If I get five, say, sure say a half a dozen of these placards, yeah. which means that any given time, you're not going to have any more than six cards down. I don't think that's How long I is think it's good. How long is the sub? sub uh, they anticipate here being until until June. Then it goes to uh, San Diego for a change of command ceremony, and then it'll be out in the Pacific Fleet. So, so this would be over next June, no matter what. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what their schedule is. They may uh, the retrofit may be done ahead of time, and they may may leave sooner. Mm -hmm. But the target date now is for them to leave sometime in so June. It's not a very long term commitment. No. It seems to me. What's that? It's only six right. These are these are the, these are people that that uh, volunteer to protect our country. Yeah, that's right. They, there were a lot of these men. I was at the volunteer check-in uh, booth during the seafood festival, and a lot of them showed up. And they didn't just come in for free. They came in and volunteered. Well, they did. Beer test. Oh yeah, I, a lot of them. Right. Okay. And we right. kept track of them. We wrote down all the names and everything. Yeah. So. They, that's, they contributed a lot to the season. I think, yeah, definitely. All right. That's Great. Yeah. I'll pass that along and show you how to a motion on it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Got a motion? Yeah. I would move to approve Mr. Renier's proposal that we authorize him to produce six placards to be distributed to the crew of the USS Hampton, which is currently being under retrofitting at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, to park for free at either one of the precinct parking lots. I'll second that. All in favor? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other one? public comment? On that note, closing comments? Bob? Uh, when we are going to have a dish jockey Saturday night from 6 to 8. DJ, yeah. Uh, Jack, I don't think that got mentioned. That would precede the fire show and kind of just get the crowd in a festival mood. 6 o'clock, 6 to 8. Nick Diamond, on the stage, eight-ish. Maureen, do you have Nick any closing comments? very good. Yes. Uh, and he's, he will have a job, too, to advertise this event yeah. for the people who want it. He already knows that. He knows oh, I know. He's there for my purpose. He can play three songs. <laughs> Right. you have anything else? All right, on that note, we will close the meeting at 618. Thank you. Thank you, 22.